The Dallas Mavericks ended up finishing the season 38 and 44 last season after making a mid-season trade for Kyrie Irving. And obviously that isn't the most ideal situation after you trade for a superstar player such as Kyrie Irving, you know what I'm saying? So in today's video, man, I kind of just want to talk about some of the offseason moves that Dallas Mavericks have made this last offseason to kind of, you know, rebuild and revamp their team going into the 2024 and the 2025 season, you know what I'm saying? With Kyrie Irving and Luka Dantage being the head of the snake, you know what I'm saying? So without further ado, man, let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks offseason. So the first thing I do want to talk about when it comes to the Dallas Mavericks underrated offseason is going to be the draft that they did have. You know what I'm saying? Because if you ask me personally, I feel like with both the picks that they did have, the 12th and the 24th overall pick, I feel like they hit the nail on the head with both these picks, if you ask me personally. You know what I'm saying? So but the first pick they had at the 12th overall pick was Derek Lively, who I think is just going to come in and kind of do everything that they need him to do. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a 7-1 center that is a pretty decent lob threat. He's big. He can kind of rebound. Obviously, he's going to get bigger as time goes along. But like... You know what I'm saying? You got a 7-1 center that's a lob threat. And if you ask me personally, man, I feel like that's really all uh, Luka Dantage and Kyrie Irving really need because it's not like they need a big man where you could throw the ball down on the post and he's going to, you know, do a couple back down dribbles and then turn around with a little fade or something. You know what I'm saying? That's not really, not really the type of big man that uh, the Dallas Mavericks need. So I feel like this was a pretty good, you know, pick for the Dallas Mavericks overall. And then they ended up picking Oliver Prosper at the 24th overall pick, who is a 6'8 power forward. And if you ask me personally, man, just like I said about Derek Lively, man, I feel like he's gonna do the exact same thing, you know, when it comes to his role, just, you know, play, you know, a solid power forward position. And obviously now that they have a decent, you know, playable center, I don't think they're gonna have to have Dwight Powell be the, you know, the five out there, you know what I'm saying? Because Dwight Powell is athletic as he is, I think he's like 6'8", 6'9", something like that. He's obviously not the height to play an ideal center in today's NBA, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I feel like I feel like they just hit the nail on the head with this draft, you feel me? Because like I said, you have the 12th overall pick and you have the 24th overall pick, so it's not like you have a, you know, a top 10, a lottery pick or something like that. So I feel like with the picks that they did have, they definitely, you know, did what they were supposed to do. Now, as for the Dallas Mavericks free agency as a whole, man, I really feel like they couldn't have done anything better considering the circumstances that they were in. You know what I'm saying? Like I said at the beginning of the video, man, they traded for Kyrie Irving halfway through the season, expecting this team to at least at least be a playing spot but they ended up finishing the season at the 11th seed with a record of 38 and 44 which i said is obviously not the ideal situation after trading for a superstar player in Kyrie Irving, you know what I'm saying? So what they did this off season, man, I feel like uh, was pretty decent, like I said, considering what they could do, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the first move they made was to make sure to bring the guy that they just traded for back, you know what I'm saying? So they signed Kyrie Irving to a three year, $126 million deal, which if you ask me is pretty fair considering Fred Van Fleet over there in Houston is getting pretty much the exact same contract. And I mean, you ask yourself, who would you rather have? Fred Van Fleet or Kyrie Irving? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like they didn't make out too bad with this deal. But like I said, man, I feel like there was a lot more offseason moves that they made that I really do like considering the circumstances that they were in. You know what I'm saying? So another pickup that they did get was Rashawn Holmes from the Sacramento Kings. Now, I know a lot of people or a lot of just like casual NBA fans really may not know a lot about Rashawn Holmes, but about a season and a half ago, two seasons ago, man, he was a really, really big part of the Kings' success, even though they did just make the playoffs for the first time last year in like 20 years. So like, he was definitely a big, you know, part of what the Sacramento Kings were doing about a season and a half ago. But um, I feel like he can come in and kind of do exactly what uh, Derek Lively can do for the Dallas Mavericks. Now, obviously he's not the same size and that's kind of uh, one of Rashawn Holmes' biggest downfalls is his size. I think he's like a 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 6 uh, power forward slash center. And he's really not the most athletic guy, but like he can catch a lob here and there, you know what I'm saying? He's not that great defensively, but I feel like for what the Dallas Mavericks need, he's exactly what they could use, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like this was a pretty good pickup. And now uh, for another sign-in that they got was they brought back Dwight Powell on a three-year deal who, if you ask me, man, I really didn't feel like this move was too necessary to be honest with you. Just considering that y'all got Derek Lively, y'all just brought in Rashawn Holmes, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just feel like there wasn't really a need for another undersized power forward, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, he, even the small ball center, they be having Dwight Powell out there running the small ball center. I just feel like y'all have, at this point now, and you know, what y'all did over the off season, I feel like y'all have better options than Dwight Powell, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Dwight Powell, but it's like, like, come on now, like, really? like. 
Dwight fucking Powell, you know what I'm saying? But come on now. But I will say, as for another move that the Dallas Mavericks made this offseason, man, I have to say the, the favorite move that, for me personally, besides the Kyrie Irving deal, is Grant Williams. Because a lot of people after this last season with the Boston Celtics, a lot of people were kind of down on Grant Williams, just considering the fact that like he was taking a couple more shots than he probably should have. Uh, he was kind of running his mouth a little too much this season. Like, I don't know if you guys remember that instance where they were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers and he was at the free throw line. He was like, I'm going to make both of them. And he missed both of them. And he kind of costed the Boston Celtics the game, you know what I'm saying? So I think it was just kind of stuff like that that the Boston Celtics fans kind of got, like, tired of. But, man, if you ask me, man, I really think Grant Williams is one of the best role players in the league, bro. I feel like he's... You know, he can hold his own defensively against pretty much any position. Like, he's a big body, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can hold his own. And I feel like he's got quick enough feet to, you know, get out there with the guards. Now, he's obviously not going to be shutting down a motherfucker like Kyrie Irving. But, hey, the great thing is he's not going to have to worry about that now that he's on the same team with that man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like uh, Grant Williams was a pretty good pick overall for the for the, uh, the Dallas Mavericks, just because, I mean, like I said, for what he was doing with the Boston Celtics over the past two seasons, man, he was a really big part of the success that they did have, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, last season, but actually both of the two seasons, you know, previous seasons didn't really end the way they wanted it to, but the first year they got to the NBA Finals, and then the second year they got to the Eastern Conference Finals, and ended up losing in seven to the Miami Heat, the team that they beat the season before, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, I can see why the Boston Celtics and the Boston Celtic fans kind of wanted to move on from Grant Williams, but man, I feel like all 29 other teams would have loved to have a guy like Grant Williams, you know what I'm saying? So um, as for the Dallas Mavericks offseason overall, man, I just really wanted to come on here, chop it up about it because I really feel like it isn't, I feel like the Dallas Mavericks just aren't getting enough credit for the, the offseason that they did have. Now, obviously they didn't go out and get no other superstar player to put next to Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. But I think over the last couple years, man, we realized like that isn't always the recipe for success. You want to go out and get players that, you know, fit around the team and that fit around the players that you currently have on your roster to help you, you know, get to that to that next level. You know what I'm saying? Which for the Dallas Mavericks is probably a championship because, you know what I'm saying? Last season, well, they didn't even make the playoffs. But the season before that, they made it to the Western Conference Finals after beating the Phoenix Suns. Number one seed Phoenix Suns, that is, you know what I'm saying? So... I just feel like this team actually has a lot of potential, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a 23-year-old Luka Doncic, the head of the snake, the main head of the snake. So, I just feel like the Dallas Mavericks have a lot to look forward to, man. So, for all the Dallas Mavericks fans, man, just keep your head up, you know what I'm saying? I feel like y'all have better stuff coming this upcoming season. You know, after how last season ended, man, like I said, 38 and 44, that is obviously not the situation y'all thought y'all was going to be in when y'all traded for Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? But now that y'all got some, you know, some decent role players alongside those guys, I don't know, man, I feel like y'all can make something work, and I definitely can see y'all being at minimum a top 17, minimum, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and that pretty much wraps up this video, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it, found it useful information in any type of way and if you did man make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that like button it really helps us out over here at the book discussions podcast and uh yeah man until then uh, i will see you guys again uh, me and my boy taj we're gonna try to get back into the to the rhythm of making these podcasts because we have been slacking lately but like i said man until next time uh stay safe keep doing y'all thing and uh just keep loving the game of basketball man we out the jungle like I'm Conan, kind of a buff hands. Switch the flow like it was broken. I'm on the road, man. Making plays just like DeRozan. I shoot my shot, and that shit wetter than the ocean. I brag a lot, but with the wind and come the boat I made a lot from them apartments that I sold. And he didn't make it up to college, sold them streets when he enrolled. And I know I'm a scholar from the moments that I was exposed in.